on the false equivalence of comparing left and right wing violence. The right wing loves milk, right? I need milk! I, I need milk! I need milk! I need milk! I need, I need milk! I need milk! I need milk right now! Help! Milk right now, please! Help! Well, maybe not anymore. Recently, some leading members of the right in the UK, Nigel Farage, Stephen Yaxley Lennon, otherwise known as Tommy Robinson, and Carl Benjamin, otherwise known as the Salami of Akkad, have had a milkshake tossed on them as they've gone about their politicising. You'd think they'd love this. I mean... But rather, there's been an outcry over this delicious dousing. This left-wing violence is dangerous, people say. It can only lead to an escalation. Next, the left will be drinking battery acid and sloshing that over people. To me, as you can understand, that sounds a bit silly. I mean, like I said, it also forgets the long history of political protest that has involved food ending up on politicians. So, as it's not obvious to some that this crying over spilt milk is silly, I guess I'll have to make a video about it. Who knows, maybe I'll get monetized. What we're going to do is think about left-wing and right-wing violence and see where the milkshakings fit into that. For some people, left-wing and right-wing violence are the same. They can't see a difference. People like this chump, for example. What I'm saying is this. You had a group on one side and you had a group on the other and they came at each other with clubs and it was vicious and it was horrible. Are left-wing and right-wing violence the same? Let's take a look. There'll be a few content warnings as we go along, sadly, because we're going to be dealing with some pretty messed up shit. The first content warning is this. President Trump. But we're too late for that. So be warned, in the next section we're going to be considering hate fueled violence. And milkshake as well, if you're lactose intolerant. How does milkshaking compare with the violence of the right? It's actually pretty difficult to choose where to start and what to include when thinking about right-wing violence. There's so much to choose from, you see. Randomly then, I'm going to start in 2008. And remember, we won't be including everything. These are just some of the examples available of right-wing violence. Our first example then is from 2008. Here, a person murders two people because he blames liberals and gays for his inability to get a job. So what kind of violence have we got here? The right-winger murdered people. And why did this right-winger murder people? Because he was frustrated he couldn't get a job and irrationally blamed that on liberals and gays. It's murder motivated by irrational hate. Let's contrast it with some left-wing violence. Now, this is going to be especially horrible. You might want to close your eyes and cover your ears. <laughs> Here we have somebody throwing a milkshake. So what kind of violence have we got? Milkshake. Milkshake splashed on someone. That person covered in flavourful cow juice is Timmy Robinson. Can you see the difference in the violence though? The right wing violence is murder. The left wing violence is splashing a milkshake on someone. They are not the same. To treat them at all similarly is a false equivalence. I haven't mentioned why the left winger covers the other in milkshake yet. We'll get to that later. But note for now the difference in the scale, the type of violence. The right wing violence is murder. The left wing violence is a milkshake. Let's have a look at another example of right wing violence. We're going to jump over lots of examples. A right wing attack in Norway in which 92 people were murdered. Six people murdered at their Sikhs temple by a right winger. Three Jews murdered by a right winger, firebombs thrown at mosques, and sadly lots of other examples. And we're going to 2015, when a right winger murdered nine black people at their church in Charleston. So what type of violence have we got here? Murder again. And why? In the case of Charleston, the right wing murderer wanted to start a race war. Their right wing racist ideology meant they hated black people and wanted to murder them, wanted all of them killed. Again, the murder was motivated by the right-wing ideology of hate. Okay, so back to the left-wing violence. What have we got this time? I can sense it's going to be something absolutely horrifying. Prepare yourself. It's, it's, it's a milkshake again. Here we have a left-winger throwing a milkshake at someone. This time the person getting a milky douche is Nige. Again, can you see the difference in the violence? 
The right-wing violence is murder. Murder is not far away from right-wing ideology. And the left-wing violence is a milkshake thrown at someone. Again, we'll talk about motivation in a bit. But first, jump forward one year, yeah, just one year, past a murderer who was interested in Nazis, past a right-winger who murdered school kids because of his racism, past a right-wing murderer of three people who defended women's rights to make decisions about their own bodies, past a right-wing murderer who was inspired by another racist right-wing murderer, and another who was also a fan of Nazis, and come to 2016, all of those right-wing murders, and ones I've not mentioned, happened in a single year. Right-wing violence is just on a whole different scale to left-wing violence. So, in 2016, a British left-wing politician, the Labour MP Joe Cox, was murdered by a right-winger. He was a nationalist who cried, Britain first, before murdering Joe Cox. Again, we have right-wing ideology leading to the murder of someone. Now, let's see what terrible thing we can find the left-wingers doing. I mean, aren't they all inspired by Stalin, that murderous tyrant? Oh, yes, hang on a minute, I've found something. It's, oh, disgusting, oh. No, wait, it's a milkshake again. A left-winger threw a milkshake over someone again. This time, Carl Benjamin got soggy. Right-wing violence escalates to murder. Left-wing violence is a milkshake. I guess you get the idea by now, don't you? Sadly, we could go on with example after example of right-wing violence escalating to murder. We could look at a right-wing group who plans to attack foreigners and refugees, a white supremacist who killed a black man to practice for a massacre. We could look at how Islamophobic comments escalated into murder, or how, at a tense alt-right rally, the Unite the Right rally, a right-winger was the one who flipped and murdered someone or how a right-wing murderer was brainwashed by pro-Trump white supremacist websites with edgy memes, or how another right-winger was brainwashed by anti-Muslim propaganda and murdered a person outside a mosque, or how a right-winger, an incel, was so filled with misogyny that he murdered a girl because she didn't want to date him, along with murdering other students, or how a right-winger mailed bombs to people who were critics of President Trump, or another anti-Semitic right-winger who murdered 11 Jews in their synagogue, or another sexist and racist right-wing murderer, or another, or another, a murderer who said they were inspired by other contemporary right-wingers like Candace Owens and Donald Trump, or another, or recently, a right-winger who plotted to murder another Labour MP. I hope by now you get the idea. Right-wing violence is on another scale to left-wing violence. First of all, you can see that right-wing violence happens far more frequently than left-wing violence, and right-wing violence ends in murder. Right-wing ideology drives its adherents to commit murder one way or another, whereas left-wing violence is a milkshake. The silly notion that this is somehow the thin end of the wedge and that the left will cause real violence to come about is stupid because real violence is already here because of the right. People are getting murdered by the right. Let's take some time to think about the motivation of the left then when it comes to violence. Why are left-wingers throwing milkshake at people like Farage, Timmy Robinson and Kyle Benjamin? It's because the left-wingers are doing it out of defence. Out of defence of the people the right-wingers want to murder. Farage, Timmy and Kyle have repeatedly been racist, sexist and violent. They want their right-wing ideas to become mainstream too. Let's take a look at some of the things these people have said and are pushing for. Of course there's a content warning here, as we'll hear examples of racism, homophobia, sexism etc. It's not personal, no one really thinks you're any No one thinks you're like some gangster or anything. If you had just kept your mouth shut, I wouldn't be putting a picture with the words gay nigga from outer space over your face. Hey, Hey, So, fuck off, chick. I'll fuck off, you fat What are you talking about, You when you see these communities and you see these houses, you think this is a British community or you might have British Muslims. They are, they are enemy combatants in these houses. In these houses are enemy combatants who want to kill you, maim you and destroy you. They want to destroy our way of life. I mean, that's gross, isn't it? And we've seen where these right-wing ideas lead. They lead to right-wing people murdering women, murdering people of colour, murdering LGBTQ people, murdering kids, murdering liberals. And if this is not delivered, there will be widespread 
how many anger in this country yes. on a scale and in a way that we have never seen before. But if they don't deliver this Brexit that I spent 25 years of my life working for, then I will be forced to don khaki, pick up a rifle and head for the front line. So, in an effort to stop the right from getting in a position where they can murder others, the left fights back. And this time, it fights back with milkshake. Yum. Remember, this isn't an escalation of violence. As we've seen, the right have already turned the violence up to 11. Milkshake isn't the gateway to acid. In fact, using milkshake is a de-escalation of violence. It's a step down from the right-wing violence of murdering MPs, for example. Milkshake and, and other foodstuffs have been used for a few reasons. For the first person to use it recently, it was what happened to be at hand when they were being harassed by some right-wing people. For others, it's a political protest. It's been seen as a way to bring humiliation to right-wingers, so that they will be too embarrassed to hang around and continue their hate preaching. And that worked. Farage refused to get off his campaign bus for fear of the milkshake. Okay, okay, okay. But what about the other times, when the left has been more physically violent? What about that time our beloved president was referring to, when there was, as he put it, group on one side and you had a group on the other and they came at each other with clubs and it was vicious and it was horrible. This was at the Unite the Right rally in 2017. Let's think about this for a moment then. Taking the president's word as a true representation of what happened, which might be a mistake given that this is the liar-in-chief who's chatting. But taking them as a true representation, what have we got? We've got the right wing with clubs. And from what we've seen already, we know what they would like to do with those clubs kill people they hate. And we've got the left with clubs. And why do the left have clubs? From what we've already seen, they're here to defend the people who the right want to murder. But don't take my word for it. Listen to Canal West, who was at the rally, talk about how those on the left defended people the right wants to murder. Different picture of Charlottesville than President Trump saying anarchists and anti-fascists saved his life. Absolutely. You had a number of the courageous students of all colors at the University of Virginia who were protesting against the neo-fascists themselves. The neo-fascists had their own ammunition. And this is very important to keep in mind, because the police, for the most part, pulled back. Uh, the next day, for example, uh, the 20 of us who were standing, many of them clergy, uh, we would have been crushed like cockroaches if it were not for the anarchists and the anti-fascists who approached over 300, 350 anti-fascists. We just had 20, and we sing in this little light of mine. You, see, you know what I mean? So that the, 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 Antifa the, the, meaning anti-fascists. The anti-fascists and, and the crucial role of the anarchists, because they saved our lives, actually. We would have been completely uh, crushed, and, and I'll never forget that. The left are there for the defense of the people the right hate. Basically, although they would hate to be called such, the left are some of the absolute heroes. Here's some footage from the event Trump and Canal West are referring to, and you can decide for yourself. Passing the Tower of London, 5,000 fascists rally to their mobilization for the much-advertised march through the East End. And Sir Oswald Mosley, black shirt leader, arrives at Royal Mint Street to inspect his followers. In step here, thousands of East Enders prepare to resist the invasion, barricading the path the fascists will take. 6,000 police are already concentrated in the area. Others are rushed to reinforce them. Communists, laborites, and Jews jam the fascist route, resisting the peaceful efforts of the outnumbered police to clear the way. Incensed by black shirt, anti-red, anti-Jew propaganda, high beat and Burroughs unsuccessfully petitioned the Home Office to forbid the march. Now the crowd take matters into their own hands. So yeah, that wasn't the Unite the Right rally. That was footage from what's become known as the Battle of Cable Street. It happened in 1930s London when fascists, who loved to kill marginalised people like foreigners and Jews, wanted to march through a Jewish district. I'm not overusing the word fascist here. This group called themselves fascists. Unlike the modern day right, at least they had the decency to be honest about what they are. In Britain, the Battle of Cable Street has become a positive memory part of the British fight against Nazis and fascism around the time of the World Wars. The people who stood up to the right are viewed as folk heroes. That's what the left at the Unite the Right rally are. That's what the left is every time they stand up to the violence of the right.
the left using milkshakes is not an escalation of or a gateway into violence. The right have already jacked the violence up high because the ideology of the right is violent and has violence at its core. Left-wing use of milkshakes is a de-escalation of the violence. People need to stop being stupid about milkshakes. The real problem is right-wing ideology, politics and violence. Spend more time calling out the violence of the right and get rid of right-wing politics. Milkshakes don't kill anyone. Right-wing politics do. As an epilogue, we're going to consider the response of the right to there being milkshake. When Timmy Robinson was doused in milkshake, this is how he and his right-wing friends responded. That's what you get for being a fascist! By the way, Stephen doesn't even need the excuse of being covered in milkshake to use physical violence. He's just a violent man. This is how Count Dankula, the election candidate for the racist right-wing political party UKIP, responded to the mere potential of getting milkshake on his nappy. And when the racist Australian politician was egged, this is how he and his right-wing friends responded. No. <laughs> The right are the originators of the violence the left are responding to, and the right escalate the violence. In contrast, here's an example of how to respond well. This is the left politician, the Labour politician Ed Miliband, doing a live interview, during which he gets egged. See how he responds and take a lesson, Timmy. I think it's a couple of things. First of all, we ran a very good campaign. We talked to 30,000 voters since January, talking about Labour's plans on jobs, apprenticeships, housing, the things that matter to people. We've also got people, I think, who thought... We've also... Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Obviously not, not one <laughs> no. of my fans. No, no. But hey, go on. Um, uh, we've, we've obviously got people who, uh, who, you know, came to us because on jobs, on apprenticeships, on the things that matter to them, they saw that Labour was providing uh, a message of hope. Ed responds with grace and humour, smoothly picks up where he was and talks about the politics of hope, the politics of the left. Nice one, Ed. That's how you do it, the schooling from the left. Did it hurt? Not really. <laughs> <laughs>